Introducing the snow tank. Now, although I call it a snow tank, it's actually an upgraded 1976 Bombardier Bombi. Built specifically to conquer the snow, this tracked vehicle is more widely known as a snowcat. Weighing in at a respectable 2,500 pounds, it still exerts less ground pressure per square inch than a person on snowshoes, which comes as no real surprise considering that the snow tank is all track. Floats like a butterfly, pulls like a workhorse thanks to its aggressively profiled winter grousers for solid traction and an engine that is geared for plenty of low-end torque. So why did I buy a snowcat? Well, I'm glad you asked. Up until now, I've been using a snowmobile to work in the bush during the winter months. Although the old Jag has been great for transporting me and a few supplies along the trails, it was forever getting stuck in the deep powder or slush whenever I had to venture off the beaten path. Plus, I've been needing to haul some logs in the snow, which a snowmobile simply isn't built for, at least not for long, without blowing itself up. So, for half the average price of a new snowmobile, I purchased this little gem last summer, a Bombi Snowcat. My sister-in-law commented that it resembled a Happy Meal box from McDonald's. And you know what? I had to agree. But that was before it was transformed into the mean machine that it is today. These are the upgrades. New paint job, done with a grinder and spray can. Vinyl stickers to display the outsider crest. Polyurethane drive sprockets. LED headlights. And light bars on the front and back of the heated cab. Not to mention the engine, which was upgraded before I purchased the Snowcat. Originally, it had a 1.6 liter Ford engine with manual transmission. Now it has a 2.5 liter Iron Duke with automatic transmission. What was once a cute little Happy Meal has now become the Snow Tank. Good news, I just got notified that the rest of the roofing steel for the main cabin is in. Oh, I can't believe it. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be in until spring at the earliest. I've been having trouble getting materials for the cabin and we almost finished putting the steel on, but there was just a couple sheets that we didn't have that needed to go on. So I put the order in, I called a bunch of people uh, and I found a supplier that could give me a couple sheets of steel. So we're gonna take the snow cat now, go get the steel and bring it into the cabin. Hopefully we can get the snow shoveled off, get the steel on, and get that roof done today. That would be incredible. I was looking forward to hauling the steel in, not only so that we could finish the cabin roof with it, but also to see how the snowcat performed under load. I'd like to take a moment to thank Harry's for sponsoring this episode. I don't always shave, but when I do, I use Harry's. As cheesy as that sounds, it's true. I made the switch to Harry's over a year ago because I love the smoothness of their razors and the quality of their blades. Not to mention how affordable they are. Take care of yourself in the new year. Harry's is a personal care brand that has reinvented the way you shave in a premium, hassle-free way. Start the year off right. Help Harry's support great causes as they give 1% of their global sales to nonprofit organizations that provide mental health care to men in need. I also love using Harry's Signature Foaming Shaving Gel, which is suitable for sensitive skin, as it contains natural ingredients such as aloe vera and cucumber. Plus, it smells amazing. Harry's just released their sharpest blades ever, and they're still the same low price of only $2 each. Get this trial set for only $3. For a high-quality shaving kit, this is an absolute steal. 
Redeem your trial set for just $3 when you go to harrys.com slash outsider. For having to drag the trailer through the snow like this, I was surprised at how little the snowcats seemed to be affected. The snow tank performed beautifully as it navigated between the trees with the trailer in tow. However, I did notice that the left track could use a little tightening, judging by how the belt was beginning to curl itself behind the drive sprocket. This came back to bite me later on. We had arrived. I was excited to unload the steel so that we could get started on finishing the roof. I wonder if this is the wrong shade of green. Hopefully, hopefully it's not, but I'm gonna take this piece out here, out into the daylight and compare it with a piece I've been using on the roof already. So here's a scrap that I've been using on the roof. Oh no, oh no, it's the wrong shade of green. This is the steel I've been using on the roof, which is darker than the steel I ordered. And my wife and I looked at the, the, uh, the sample colors online when we ordered and we were sure that we had the right shade. But I guess colors are lighter than they appear. Boy, what am I gonna do now? I feel like we've been working on this roof forever. And here I thought we had the last two sheets and we were gonna finish the roof today, but boy was I wrong. I think what I'll do with those pieces that I have here now is I will use them to complete 
the tool shed we have over there for the past three or four years all we've had on top is uh some vapor barrier and it's held out not a single leak which says a lot for vapor barrier but it's high time we put a proper steel roof on that shed so we'll use the steel we have here for that but that still leaves the main cabin without the last two sheets looking at the amount of snow on the cabin though I think it's more effort than it's worth to shovel it off and put the remaining panels on anyway, so we might as well wait until the spring. I'll put an order in for the proper color and we'll get it in when we get it in. But once the snow is gone, then we'll put the last two panels on and complete the roof. I know that it probably seemed like just a couple minutes on the video to bring the steel out here today, but truth be told, it took us most of the day just to get the steel out here. And it doesn't seem like we have a lot to show for it, but at least we have the steel for the shed. That's fine. Uh, so it's not a total loss. But anyway, <laughs> that's just how some days go. Anyway, my dad and I are going to jump on the snowcat and start heading home for the day. Once we had gotten back, I dropped my dad and the trailer off so that I could take the snowcat for one last spin, which is when the real trouble began. Here's I threw the track. I was testing the turning radius of the snowcat just to see how tight it could turn. And obviously I turned it a little bit too tight and the track came off. If you watch the rear of the left track, you'll see it slip off. Right there. Now I probably didn't have it as tight as it needed to be, but this is really my first time trying it out. And of course I threw the track about two kilometers away from the snowmobile. So I have a long walk ahead of me. Now I hope that I just threw the track and that I didn't rip the belt, but I'll have to dig this track out a bit to see how it is underneath. I suspect that I just threw the track, but with minimal tools, I'm gonna have to walk out and uh, leave it for today. I'll come back with some more wrenches, some ratchet straps, a few more things, a few more friends, and see if we can't get this thing fixed. But this is gonna be a brute to fix. It's not gonna do us any favors getting the track back on, I'll tell you that. Not in the snow anyway. To be honest, this has been a pretty discouraging day between getting the wrong steel in and working almost all day to get it there and then I throw a track. Well, time for the long trip back. Got my camcorder bag here. I'll take that as well as my drone case. I think I'll bring my drills, but I'll leave my power station and my tool bag. That's it for now. Until next time, my friends, stay safe, be well, and God bless. Now there is a chance that I might be able to drive the track back on without using tools, but I didn't want to attempt it without the help of a spotter, which is why I decided to leave it for now. You didn't think I was going to leave the camera, did you? GoPro, stop recording.